Good morning, everyone. We want to welcome each and every one to our uh, worship service uh, upon the first day of the week as the Lord prescribed uh, for each and every one of us. And we have a healthy congregation this morning. We want to say good morning uh, uh, to our visitors. The red carpet is always uh, rolled out for you, and uh, we appreciate you being here with us. Uh, observing the Lord's Day once again. To all our membership here at Henry Street, we are uh, honored to have you here this morning on time and each and every one uh, to see you is uplifting to the leadership here at Henry Street and I know it's uplifting one to another to assemble and uh, uh, see each other once again. Uh, we want everybody to realize that Help is on the way during this COVID era. Uh, we all need to stay in tune uh, to the information, Alabama information that's available for when we could get our COVID shots. And uh, uh, we want everybody to consider uh, uh, getting the shot. It's better to have it uh, uh, and not need it than to need it and not have it. So uh, we ask everyone to uh, pay special attention to the COVID shot and uh, uh, the ones that may be uh, uh, sick or with the COVID, we want to uh, pay special attention to those and we want to uh, help those uh, in each and every moment that we can to uh, get over their situation this morning. So we'll uh, go forward with our worship service this morning. We ask everybody to get in the spirit of the Lord. Uh, release the tensions of the world that surround us. Uh, uh, we are among the Lord's people. We can settle down. We can uh, uh, adhere to one another. And let us all pay closely attention and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth this morning. start this morning with uh, number 370 where could I go but to the Lord if you're ready let us sing living below in this so simple world hardly a comfort can afford strive Temptation, so tell me now, where could I go but to the Lord? Now tell me, where could I go? Oh, tell me, where could I go? I'm seeking a refuge for my soul. Oh, well, I'm needing a friend to save me in the end. Tell me now, where could I go but to the Lord? The neighbors are kind, I love them everyone. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs men are from above, Tell me now, where could I go but to the Lord? And now tell me, where could I go? Oh, tell me, where could I go? I'm seeking a refuge for my soul. Oh, well, I'm needing a friend to save me in the end. Tell me now, where could I go but to the Lord? A life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I 
get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling as a death, tell me now where could I go but to the Lord? Now tell me where could I go? Oh, tell me where could I go? I'm seeking a refuge for my soul. Oh, well, I'm needing a friend to save me in the end. Tell me now, where could I go but to the Oh, um, next will be um, number 75, Hold the God's Unchanging Him. Ready? Let us sing. Time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. To my God's unchanging Everybody ought to hold to his hands To a God's unchanging hand You ought to build your hopes on things eternal A hold to God's unchanging hand Trust in him Will not leave you whatsoever years may bring. If by earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to him cling. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold to it hand to a God's unchanging hand. You ought to be your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. When your journey is completed if to God you have been true fair and bright the home in glory your and rapture so will view everybody ought to hold to it and to my God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold to it and to my God's unchanging hand. Be your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Let the church say amen. amen. Those of you who love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, say amen again. Amen. Our scripture this morning is taken from the book of Revelation. The chapter is 21. The verse is 27. That's the book of Revelation. The chapter is 21, the verse is 27, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. And it reads, And thou shalt 
and no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And may God add a blessing to all of those who first hear his word and then obey it until the end. Let us pray. The eternal and great God of heaven, we bow this time just acknowledging your greatness, knowing that you are an awesome God, and we just stand in awe of your great might this morning. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to be here on this occasion to share another worship service. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to be still another among the living. But we realize it is because of your goodness that we're still here and not because of our own. We bow this morning, Heavenly Father, that's thanking you for all those who are gathered here this morning. We just pray a special blessing upon those individuals, and we just pray that you would help us to keep pressing on and encourage someone else along the way. But we also pray for those who are not able to be here this morning. We have so many in this congregation who are afflicted with some type of illness, and we just pray, Heavenly Father, that you would bless every one of them. And we won't accept to name each individual at this time, but we know that you know who you are. But for those who have been out for some time, Sister, Sister Hooks has been ailing for a while, and Brother and Sister Walker, Sister Townsend, and who's hospitalized, we just pray that you bless her, bless Sister Brewster, who's home ill, and we just pray for Sister Coleman and her husband, we pray that you bless them. Lift them up and allow them to be back at their normal health and be your will. Pray for my own household. Heavenly Father, pray for uh, that you bless our health as well. And at this time, we're just also reminded of the problems that we're facing all over the country at this time. We just pray that you would help us to be at peace one with another. Help this nation to be a more loving nation and pray that we will have a greater regard for human life and help us to love one another as you have commanded us to love one another. We just pray that you would help us to be better citizens, Father. And we just come also asking a blessing upon the church everywhere. The Church of Christ is in session this morning. We just pray that you will bless them. Help us help the church to continue to, to, to go out and teach the word no matter the difficulties we face. We pray that we will always stand up for the truth and help with someone else to understand your will and way. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be with those who are uh, exposed to the coronavirus on a daily basis, but not yet uh, 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 affected by it. We pray that you will do first line workers in the hospitals and schools and others who we don't think of as first line workers sometimes. But we pray that you will bless those individuals who are putting themselves at risk and help them to stay safe and help us to do all that we can to protect one another. And we pray for this community that we live in. We pray that you help us to be an example here. Bless the community. Help us to always do things that will, that will glorify you rather than bringing shame to the church. Yeah. And we just pray that you will forgive us of our sins. Be with us all the days of our lives. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Walking with him each day, love life. 
my friends, and I will not mind. I love my Savior too. I love my Savior. He loves me too. Oh, I see His favor in everything I do. Happy to serve my friend, lean on His arm. Rapture will never end, nothing along. Forces will sweetly blend under his charm. I love my Savior too. I love my Savior. He loves me too. Let the church once again say amen. Amen. We are truly blessed and honored to be here in the house of Almighty God. I believe I share the same sentiment as you that you're glad that Jesus died for you and rose again for your salvation. You're glad this morning that God put a roof over your head, clothing on your back. I didn't turn it off. I'm, I'm glad that. He alerted me that it had my mic on, but thank you for coming and to worship God in spirit and in truth. Again, we thank the God of heaven for allowing us to be here and to, of course, first and foremost, give him the thanks and praise he, des he deserves for giving us Jesus who suffered, died, and rose again, that we may have a chance at eternal life. I'm also very, very thankful for the Henry Street Church of Christ as a whole starting with the contributions that all the brothers make here as they contribute first in the worship service and do a lot of things behind the scenes that many people don't ever see. But I know that God sees and that it will follow them unto the judgment day. I'm thankful for the wonderful sisters and unity that you have as you work among yourselves and uh, be bright shining lights into the community that you are. Thank you for your labors in the Lord as one of our elders has said earlier that we're here to bring glory to God and his church instead of shame uh, because of our actions. So thank you for being that strong group of Christian soldiers that are marching on to the heavenly glory. I also thank God for my wonderful wife for her continued love and support and again for the elders for their many years of leadership here and leading us down the right path and helping us stay focused on Christ Jesus, the only way to our salvation. And of course, again, I want to echo, echo the sentiments of our elders as well ha that have welcomed our visitors. We want to again extend a hearty and warm-hearted felt invitation to you to not only be here today, but continue to worship and fellowship with us once again. We're always as well glad of uh, all the efforts of our brothers that constantly support us here out of Nigeria, out of the Philippines, and India in particular. We are with you in spirit and continue to share the gospel in your respective homelands. But of course, we're here to worship God. And I want to again bring us back to Revelation chapter 21, verse number 27. Again, the background of Revelation chapter number 21 is in regards to the revelation of what heaven will be like. Our specific verse, though, focuses in on the fact of what heaven's not going to be, what's not going to be allowed to be in the heavenly glory. Because again, Jesus in Revelation, he told us that heaven's going to be a place of no more crying, dying, pain, and no sorrow. And he's going to tell us why in this verse, because that which causes pain and sorrow in our life will have no admittance into the heavenly glory. 
in which we strive to get there because of the blood of Jesus Christ in our lives. So Revelation 21, verse number 27 says out of the King James Version, again regarding heaven, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. I want you to highlight some things in your mind from that scriptures. That which maketh a lie will not make it into heaven. And of course, they which are written in the book of life are the ones that will. So with that being said, I want our topic this morning to be simply, our honesty means everything, but there's a subtopic being, undoing the spiritual damage that the year 2020 has caused cause that is again our honesty means everything undoing the spiritual damage the year 2020 has caused now let's deal with this topic this morning briefly and at the same time give God the glory and honor he deserves from our hearts being open unto what thus says the Lord this morning our key verse again Revelation chapter 21 verse number 27 brings to our attention the results of the judgment day where there'll be people excluded from the joys and bliss of heaven and eternal salvation that we all labor from one of those groups that we're highlighting today is that those that will not make it into heaven are those that cannot tell the truth in other words we call these people liars in our current language we can easily see from the fact that those that will not make it into heaven will be classified as liars in God's mind and never allowed entrance into the salvation that we all are waiting for. Instead, and unfortunately, they will go to the eternal punishment in the lake of fire mentioned in Revelation 20, verse 11 to 15, because their names were not recorded in the book of life. In other words, because they have no lack of integrity, uh, they have a lack that is of integrity. Their names will not be in that uh, book of life reserved for all those saved when Christ comes back. And unfortunately, there's a reason why we're talking about integrity, we're talking about lying, and we're talking about the importance of being honest at all times. You're going to see this develop as the message goes forward this morning. Unfortunately, I believe that many people can say amen before I even give you the message this morning that from 2016 to 2020, the words fake news have become a common phrase in the vocabulary of Americans today. This message is certainly intended as a satire upon American politics, but at the same time, it's a satire on American politics for the simple fact that American politics does not live up to the standard of the integrity that God wants all mankind to display within this lifetime. You see, of, of course, the Donald Trump presidency, it solidified this concept of fake news in the minds of American people. It made everyone, I don't care what your political affiliation may be, it made everyone suspicious of the news media, no matter what your political background you bring to this service here today. You see, folks, Americans, our country, our kinsmen this morning in this great nation had a sharp division of opinion regarding the news outlets they trust. And that's probably an understatement. Those who consider themselves political conservatives, their main go-to stations for news, of course, have been Fox News, One American News, and Newsmax. Those that consider themselves political liberals, have gravitated more towards the stations that we call CNN and of course MSNBC among other news outlets out there today. However, one can easily uh, uh, figure out or easily detect from a minute's conversation with somebody uh, what their political uh, uh, affiliation may be because you can easily hear them quoting over and over just like an annoying broke record if you're from my generation, the opinions of their favorite news stations. It's almost at a point, if you've probably been in the shoes that I've been in, where you've been in conversations at the water cooler at work or 
just on the telephone with somebody or just random strangers in the post office. Perhaps you have come to the conversation with some of these people and you think in your mind that you gotta hold and restrain your emotions because you can tell right off the bat, right from the beginning, that all they're doing is quoting their favorite news outlet and not thinking for themselves. You start thinking to yourself, well, you know what? I just heard Don Lemon say this on CNN, or I just heard Hannity say this on Fox News. It's almost as if people, you're, you're thinking to yourself, you know, can't you think for yourself? Can't you have your own mind? Can't you read between the lines? Don't you realize that no matter what news outlet that you think you're, you're listening to, they're spinning the news one way or another. They're spinning the news to, to, to uh, further their own agenda. They're not unbiased. They bring their biases to the table and they cater to the audience that they're targeting at the time. And then we, just like little robots, or we just like mockingbirds or parakeets, we end up saying the same thing we heard out of the news media outlets instead of thinking for ourselves and understanding that they're all coming from their own angle for their own purposes, folks. Again, folks, imagine, think about it this way. Imagine if everybody knew Bible verses like they could quote Fox News opinion column reporters, this would be a great nation. Imagine if people knew the life and teachings of Jesus instead of what CNN reports, this would be a better place. Quite frankly said, the only way to make America great again is to let Christ's teachings become the head of our lives, the head of our homes, and the head of our institutions again, no matter who's in the office of the presidency in this day and age. However, folks, we do live in the age described by Proverbs 14, verse number 12, which says it's very famous to those that have been in the church long enough. It says, there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You see, the lack of integrity, the lack of honesty, and the general corruption that we have all witnessed at the highest levels of government over the past four years has taken an irreversible effect on the hearts of millions right now. In other words, it's a sad situation when you really look at where America is spiritually right now. Folks, we have seen from the pristine halls of the White House to the Capitol building to the Pentagon, we have seen integrity thrown to the wind and replaced by corruption. However, in God's house, folks, I hope you understand and can say in your hearts, I'm in God's house. And what God wants is what's going to rule in my life no matter what's going on in the political sphere of our existence right now. You see, in God's house, we must become the people, our national leadership, our culture, and even the last crop of political candidates we have recently voted for are not. That is, we must be the last stand for integrity, church, and honesty in a world that has gone cold and indifferent unto the truth. Oh, I hope I'm talking to somebody here today. Look around you and you'll see exactly what I'm saying and how lost America is right now. Here is what we must do, folks. Let me give you a seven part plan in order to avoid the corruption and taking on the mentality and the, the God awful culture that has developed within America right now. We got to do these seven things and I'll be short with them here today. In other words, we have to be unlike the political leadership that has been unleashed upon the world and made normal instead of disgusting to us this day and age where integrity and honesty is no longer the rule of the day. First, we must seek our wisdom from God instead of man. You see, CNN, Fox News, Republicans and Democrats are not godly, they're not God, and they're not wise right now. Oh, I hope I'm not stepping on your toes. I'm just telling you the truth here today. If we seek our wisdom from these people, we will duplicate the corruption of our political leaders. Second, we must make cover-ups of our own bad deeds, as our politicians have done, a thing we'll, we will not do as Christians. Oh, I hope you understand. No matter if you're a Republican or you're a Democrat, everybody is trying to cover up everything evil that they have done. 
But God is allowing where the rug is being taken right from under them, where everything is being exposed, the corruption of man is very apparent as God is allowing the truth to come out in all these people's lives and all their skeletons are coming out of the closets right now. Oh, I hope you understand what I'm saying. So in other words, we're not to allow their culture, their deeds, their bad example to become the way of life for a Christian child of God in this day and age. We have to be different, folks. We have to be that house set upon a hill that cannot be hidden because the light of Jesus is shining through us in a corrupt world that's being led right now by corrupt people. You see, if not, folks, our secret sins that we cover up and get away with in this world will come back to haunt us either in this time or in the time to come. This we know in Luke chapter 12, verse 2 and verse number 3, which said, and this is Jesus talking about the status of corruption that we try to cover up. He says unto us, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear and closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. The third part of, of this seven part plan that we must do to be different than our leadership and our culture here today is that we must disassociate from troublemakers in our lives that lead us into moral decay. Why do I say this? Because folks, we are not to be like our political leaders right now. We are not to amass corrupt allies for profits like politicians are doing here today. You see what's happening with them is what will happen to us too. When we put around us a bunch of corrupt people, this will become a short-term gain, but it will become a long-term loss for us spiritually as we'll earn for ourselves eternal damnation if we don't repent of surrounding ourselves with corrupt people to further our own selfish agendas. This we also know is part of the principle that's being taught to us out of 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 that says, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. That means evil associations will corrupt you. If you surround yourself with corruption, you have no choice but to be corrupt when time marches on in your lives. Don't fool yourself. That's what the Bible says. Don't be deceived. You're not smarter than anybody else. I'm not smarter than anybody else. If God says it can happen, it can happen to you just like the next man. The fourth part of our plan, is self, a plan that he is not of salvation, but our plan in order to not take on the corruption of our politicians and our culture today is that we must seek to be a unifier instead of one who causes division like politicians do. You see, folks, this is also a biblical concept that's lifted from the pages of the Bible that says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Oh, amen, somebody. I hope you understand it's not about pleasing a majority of folks. It's about pleasing Jesus, who is the majority. What I mean by that is he's the King of kings, Lord of lords, and it's going to call the shots at the end of time whether heaven is or hell is going to be our eternal home. Fifth, as we get down to this seven-part plan, we must show compassion to our fellow man. Instead of the old philosophy of every man for himself, as many political agendas advocate today. We know this is mentioned in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 8. This is our guide, not the Constitution of the United States. Even this supersedes the Constitution of the United States. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3, verse number 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous. Sixth of our seven-part plan in order to be different than the world we live in today is we must speak out against corruption and authority like both John the Baptist did under Herod and Jesus did against the Pharisees who were an influ influential political and religious group of the Lord's day, which you'll see them do in Mark 6, verse 18 and Matthew chapter number 23. In other words, folks, I don't care if you're Republican, I don't care if you're Democrat, I don't care if you're Libertarian, Green Party, or Independent. When your people, no matter who you support, are wrong, speak out against the wrong for them. Don't cover up for them. Mm. Because you make your, yourself accessory to spiritual crime 
called dishonesty, a lack of integrity, and of course, you're being a liar when all is said and done. Fifth, seventh and finally, first and foremost, we must obey God no matter who is in power. I don't know about you, but I live by Acts chapter 5, verse number 39, where the Jewish leadership told the apostles to quit preaching Jesus, and they said unto them, they said, we'd rather obey God than man. Doesn't matter what pressure you're getting from your political associations. Doesn't matter what pressure you're getting from your households or from your family or for your, from your peers or from the highest level of government. At the end of the day, we ought to be saying, I stand on Jesus. I don't care if I have to do it by myself. I stand on Jesus. If he contradict any of you, no matter if a whole army comes against me, I'm standing with Jesus if I have to stand by myself. Oh, I hope I'm talking to somebody here today. You see, when we deviate from what God wants in, in order to satisfy or take off the back of the pressure of society, our culture, or even our political leadership, we have to understand that when we deviate from God in order to please them, even if it's from the party of our choice, we must defy every ungodly word that they propose and they legislate. So in conclusion, remember, everything that our government has not been, we must be for ourselves and not pick up their ungodly traits that they have made a new normal in American society. I hope you can receive this here today. We are at a crossroads as Christians right now. We don't really understand how corrupt 2020 was and how this first quarter of 2021 is is right now and you have to understand satan loves to get in leadership he loves to be heads of countries he loves to be uh, the heads of the senate and congress and our local governments because that's where he gets his influence over millions of people at the same time but you have to understand that we may be entering a time just like the roman government where being a christian may become taboo in this lifetime where we may become the bad guys because we will not go along with the program of corruption that has become america at this time don't think i hate america no nothing like that don't think i'm against people but think this morning that i'm with jesus and i'm hoping you follow me with jesus here today like paul has said follow me as i follow christ amen somebody i hope you receive this here today. May God bless and keep you. The message is yours. Let's transition thoughts here today. Remember, we want to make sure that heaven's our home at the end of the day. If we have done something wrong as Christians, you know you can run right back to the loving embrace of the God who sent Jesus to die for you. He's still there for you. He still wants to receive you. He still wants to walk around heaven with you, but you have a responsibility if you are a Christian that has fallen short, according to Acts 8, verse 22, and 1 John 1, 7, and verse number 10, in order to be uh, reunited with God, to have fellowship with him again, peace with him, and be back in salvation, you have to repent of that sin, whatever it was, confess your fault to him, and ask him to forgive you, and he's going to forgive you right then and there. But if you're not a child of God, we live in a great country called the United States, but there's a kingdom that's greater than that. The Bible tells us, Daniel told us thousands of years ago that Christ is going to set up a kingdom that can never be broken but will break all the other kingdoms at the end of time. In other words, it's going to be the only kingdom standing when Christ comes back and that will be the end of the world. That kingdom is named in Romans 16, verse number 16. The Bible says, greet one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you you have come to that kingdom that kingdom has been set up here today how do i know this because god also calls the kingdom the body also known as the church of christ also known as the church for short and god talks about that in ephesians 5 verse number 23 where the bible says the husband is the head of the wife even as christ is the head of the church and he's a savior of the body do you want to be one of those saved here today do you want to be the one that was going to, to, to avoid, that is, be saved from the wrath of God that's going to be ushered in upon this world at the end of time? 
And instead, you'll hear Jesus say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of, your, of the Lord. Don't you want to be a part of those people that inherit the promise of John 14, verse 1 and verse number 2, where Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If this is what you want, if you want heaven as your home, if you want the forever joys and bliss of heaven that can never be taken from you, you got to believe in John 14, verse number 6. In other words, how to get there. There's only one way to get there, and Jesus told us directly how to get there. He says, I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me so you got to accept jesus christ right here right now in order to be saved he talks about this himself in mark 16 verse number 16 he says he that believes and is baptized shall be saved he that believeth not shall be damned the father's word the holy word of god also says about jesus in john 3 verse number 16 regarding the faith we must have in him being the son of god our Lord and Savior, it says in John 3, verse number 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have what, church? Everlasting life. You can't have everlasting life. You cannot have salvation. You cannot have forgiveness of your soul. You cannot have heaven without Jesus being the Lord and Savior of your life in your own heart. After you believe, you're on a good road. You're almost there to salvation. There's a few more steps you got to take in order to complete that journey. The rest of the plan of salvation is in Luke 13, 3 and verse 5 and Acts 2, verse 38, where the Bible says we have to repent of our current lifestyle. That means we must make a commitment to leave a sinful, rebellious lifestyle alone and instead take on in obedience the life of a Christian that is to live right instead. The fourth part, the fourth step of the plan of salvation in order to complete your journey that leads to salvation is that you have to show that you're not ashamed of Christ Jesus being the Lord and Savior of your life. Jesus talks about this in Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33, that we must confess him as the Son of God, which means our Lord, in order to be saved. And of course, the fifth part of the plan of salvation, that other step leading to salvation, is also listed in Mark 16, verse 16, which you already heard, where Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. So in other words, Jesus says you got to be baptized as well. Go down into the watery grave of baptism. In, in obedience to the word of God, that pool is ready for you right behind me. Well, we'll go and take your confession here today and baptize you for the for, for forgiveness of your sins. And you should be able to leave here celebrating as if you have won $2.3 million. What I mean by that is it's greater than anything else that you could ever inherit here on earth because this can never be taken from you. The Bible tells us baptism is where your sins are washed away. Acts 22, verse number 16. It tells us that's when you're added to the church, also known as being in Christ. Galatians 3, verse 27. And of course, it's where God puts that label of salvation on you. Mark 16, verse number 16. So don't let, let nothing or nobody talk you out of being saved here today. All you have to do is come down here. All I'm going to do is ask you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God in order to take your confession the biblical way? Baptize you, you and I will both be uh, going down in that watery grave of baptism where your life will be changed forever. You'll go from unforgiven to forgiven. You'll go from unsaved to saved if you'll submit to God's ordinance of being baptized for the uh, forgiveness of your sins and the salvation of your soul. Always remember, church, Revelation 2, verse number 10, where Jesus tells us after we become a Christian to remain one. That's what he means by that when he says, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. You got to follow him until the, your dying day, and heaven's going to be your home. So we're going to call up our song leader right now. That's to give you an opportunity to come down if your heart has been moved by the word of God, to give your confession to be baptized this very day for the forgiveness of your sins. Won't you come as together we stand and we sing the Lord's invitation. Won't you come? Who at the door is standing gently drawing near
Appreciate the uh, message from Brother Norwood this morning. We have a quite lengthy prayer list again this morning. First of all, we have uh, Brother Henry Joe. We know he's he's been hospitalized for some time, and certainly want to keep him in prayer. Edwin Thomas, COVID, Olin Hale is having surgery. Billy Ray Williams recovering. Charles Young surgery sister Marie Terrell sure. and brother and sister Walker sister Townsend sister Shira Coleman and husband Charles sister Hoops uh, Sandra Brooks Davis uh, mr. Jimmy McGee Daryl Sims is having surgery and uh, Shirley Jackson and family Sister Brother Kenneth Dinsmore and, and family, Sister Era Brewster and Sister Ann Townsend. Sister Townsend, by the way, is in the hospital. Sister Veronica Heath, recovering from a fall. And, uh, Calandra Raglan and daughter Leo. Sister Labrina Brewster, hospitalized. Uh, the Oliver family and English family who were bereaved. Uh, Shanti Woods is missing. Tiffany King who hospitalized. Brother Victor Jemison. Uh, the Tipping family bereaved. Nikita Duckett for forgiveness of singing. Roderick Pearson, Fred that things go in his favor this year you know and of course that's the end of the prayer list and of course we have said that we have a lengthy prayer list so if you were not included then certainly uh we'll pray for you too because we're praying for everybody but this let us pray the eternal god our heavenly father we about this time just thanking you again for the opportunity to be here to worship thee in spirit and in truth and again we pray for a blessing upon all of those who are gathered here with us this morning and we pray heavenly father that you continue to bless us help yes. us to continue to press on and in spite of the difficulties we have in li life let us not become discouraged to the point that we decide to give up we realize that giving up is not an option uh, therefore, Heavenly Father, we just ask for your strength to help us to do better, help us to make it our duty, uh, our goal to improve on a daily basis, and help us to be more like your son Jesus as time passes by. And we just come, Heavenly Father, just asking a blessing upon every individual that we name, uh, some who are sick, some who perhaps are depressed and and we don't know the problems with every individual but father we know that you know each one of the individuals that we call on uh names who call we call on the prayer list yes. we know that you know the circumstances we know that you know what it takes to make things better for them and therefore we just call on you yes. heavenly father to make things better in the lives of every one of those individuals and we pray heavenly father that you will help them those who are sick to be back on their feet but in the meantime we just ask that you will comfort them allow things to, to be better for them give them peace of mind 
And we just pray that you bless every home of those who we call as in addition to the ones who that's uh, here this morning. We just pray that you would bless every household that's represented. Help us to have love, unity, and peace in every home. Help us to have good health and help us to take nothing for granted. Father, always looking to you. But we realize we must uh, do as the message to uh, encourage us to do this morning to, uh, to work toward pleasing you, strive to please you rather than man. But we realize when we come down to the end of life, the only thing that really matters is whether or not we will please you. Yes. And we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity to be here. Bless all of those who came. And we pray that you would help each of us to be concerned about those who are yet on the outside of the body. Yes. And help us to be willing to share with those who are on the outside the things that every man, woman, boy, and girl must do in order to be pleasing unto you in order that we might be saved in the end. Forgive us of our sin and we pray that when life here is no more, a home in heaven will await us. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good church, say amen. Amen. Again, we want to thank Brother Norwood. Again, we want to thank Brother Norwood for the great message that he brought to us. And that is needed uh, in these times, uh, perilous times uh, that we are in. We come down to this portion of the service, which is known as the collection. Uh, we have a uh, uh, couple of avenues of giving if you feel the need. Uh, uh, we want to acknowledge everyone if you feel the need to give to uh, uh, kind of raise your hand if we haven't uh, served you at this particular time. And uh, we'll have the brothers to come uh, uh, to your service. The Apostle Paul wrote uh, in 1 Corinthians, 16 verses 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. Let us all bow and give thanks for the collection this morning. Our Father in heaven, we bow our heads this morning once again, Lord, just thanking you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Thanking you for being here for us, Lord. Thank you for just watching over us uh, uh, in all signs of danger, Lord. We come praying for the collection this morning, Lord. We praying for the ones that have the gift, and also for the ones that have not to give, Lord, and may you bless them to be able to give at the next appointed time, Lord. And Lord, we pray that this collection will further the mission of the church. These are the blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And also, uh, this portion of service is known as the communion. Uh, we know that the communion let us uh, uh, remember our Lord and Savior uh, as he shed his blood for us. He came down, uh, he suffered, and he shed his blood. That was the only sacrifice that was able to save us was the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He asked us to remember him upon the first day of the week on every uh, uh, Lord's day. Before Jesus suffered the agony of Gethsemane and the cruel pain on the cross, he administered a supper unto his disciples. As we partake of the Lord's Supper, which commemorates his great sacrifice, 
Let us meditate upon the suffering and the great sacrifice of the Lord for all humanity on the cross. In 1 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 11, verse 23 through uh, 30, we have the commemoration of our Lord and Savior uh, as he uh, was hung on Calvary's cross. Let us all uh, uh, pay attention for the scripture of the bread. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Let us all bow on behalf of administering the bread. Our Father in heaven, we ask that you bless this bread which is a representation of our Lord and Savior, broken body, as he hung on Calvary's cross. Lord, we pray that you would just bless this bread in honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. the cup and when he had given thanks he break it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do and remember some me after the same manner he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood uh, as often as you drink it and remember some me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup which you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, who shall, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us all pray and, and pray on behalf of the cup. Our Father in heaven, we ask that you bless this cup, which is a representation of our Lord and Savior, uh, shedded blood uh, uh, as he hung on Calvary's cross. We pray that we take it in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable unto you. This is the end of this service. Was there anyone overlooked? Let us all stand for the closing hymn and benediction.
take vengeance on nobody to ask you to put on a mask when you don't forget your mask. Yes, sir. Uh, let us take it to heart that this person is concerned about you. And uh, we ask that we just continue to look over the body, help one another at all times. Let us all bow. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, Lord. We pray on behalf of honoring you, Lord. We know that you are the almighty, Lord. We know we are nothing without you, Lord. And we pray that uh, you continue your blessings upon us, Lord. Uh, we pray for the downtrodden, Lord. We pray that you continue to lift them up, Lord, and know that you are the God of all, Lord, and you watch us over them, Lord. And we also come praying for the membership that's uh, are sick among us, among us, Lord, and we pray that you continue to bless them and lift them up to their most one in hell. Yes. We pray that you go with us, be with us, keep us all from hurt, harm, and danger. These are not the blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.